Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are doing a night vision guide video, primarily a beginner's guide, right? For those of you who follow me on social medias, uh, you must have seen that there was a poll that I set up and I gathered all the votes from those polls and mixed them and decided the winner, which was the night vision guide. Now, for those of you who are here that already know about night vision, this guide really is not going to tell you much about it. This is just something so that people can purchase and know exactly what they need and just briefly give a little bit of information about night vision. Other than that, that's pretty much it. I will be time stamping this video so that way if you're looking for specific information to do, uh, uh, you can go look it up. Uh, other than that, let's start this video and uh, see how it goes. So as previously mentioned, to start off this video, obviously some of you already know, and this is why you're in this video, as to uh, what night vision does, right? It enhances the image in a, a low uh, light environment, right? Uh, it just enhances your vision to be able to see a little bit better. Now, when it comes to night vision, there have been several generations, uh, obviously throughout the decades, uh, generation one through four to be more exact. And the only ones that matter for this guide are generation two and three. And this is because generation one is a technology from back in the Vietnam War and it's very outdated, right? The size of MVGs back then were the size of probably your coffee maker. And that's what they carried around in order to be able to see you during the night. And uh, generation four, to be honest, is very expensive, uh, in my opinion, for the amount of uh, uh, quality uh, increase from generation three night vision. Um, that it's it's not much of a difference. So there's really you're spending more money on it. Uh, aside from that, generation two and three are the ones that we're going to be talking about primarily. Uh, they're the ones that you should be looking into. Of course, with each generation, the price is higher. So just be aware of that. But uh, that's pretty much it for that information. So let's go actually to our table and just talk a little bit about uh, a few things about night vision and the equipment that you need, right? And whether or not which one's the best for you. So I previously mentioned about the generation of night vision that are available. Now within these two generations, there is something else that you need to be aware of and that is green phosphorus night vision and white phosphorus night vision. What is the difference here? Uh, does it really make a difference? And I would say it just depends on the individual that is using it, right? If uh, green phosphorus seems to be a little bit better for you uh, in means of the tint and the color uh, that is being shown, then that's for you if white phosphorus uh, is better for you then go ahead and do white phosphorus uh, some of the things that i've heard that are different is that with white phosphorus you can notice the shadows a little bit better which seems to be pretty reasonable assumption to make being that obviously white phosphorus it is a white tint with obviously the shadows uh, being darker so it's going to show relatively a lot better than an actual green phosphorus which greens a little bit darker or the green showing through the uh, green phosphorus night vision so it means of that that's pretty much the um, only difference is that you're going to face with green phosphorus and white phosphorus uh, one other thing though uh, white phosphorus is a generation three technology so mostly you'll see uh, it with uh, generation three night vision primarily. So with that, that's pretty much it for the green and white phosphorus. There's not much to go into detail. It's a matter of what you think you feel would look best. Again, for me, white phosphorus is my go-to uh, for uh, actual um, uh, the, the, the actual tint on the night vision. Now, when it comes to the types of night vision molecules that you might find out in the market, there's several ones, right? There are actual uh, monos, which are single tube, right? There are binos, which are dual tubes uh, that you might usually see in movies and films. And there are also quads if you got the 43 grand to put out uh, for them which uh, I think the cheapest ones I've actually seen are about 25 from other companies that produce their own in market. But the ones that you usually see, like in those Call of Duty films and stuff like that, the quads, 
you're looking at at least 43k worth of it so different models exist right one obvious uh, single tube a model is the pvs 14s which a lot of the armed forces use i used it i've trained with it um, not the best right uh, i'm not a fan of mono but it serves its purpose right and uh, uh, that's pretty much the ones that you'll see. Generation 2, a lot of them you'll see in the uh, after or used market. You'll see Generation 2 Night Vision being sold. Or you'll see newer generation, uh, like gener uh, Gen 3 PBS 14s being sold out in the market. For Bino, you will usually see two types. And it's actually the ones that I have personally. You'll either see the uh, PBS 31 Alphas, right? Uh, which are a different style of housing tube. And then you'll see the 1431s, which are the ones that I have right here. 1431s, uh, which use a housing of PBS 14s, right? But dual tube, right? So that's why they're called PBS um, uh, 1431s. And these are from US Night Vision. I actually uh, like what they produce and the products that they have, and they have pretty reasonable prices, right? For 1431s, it's actually pretty cheap, being that 31 alphas usually go for around 12 to 15 uh, K uh, per unit. So for the actual binos, that would be one. Uh, and then there are the quads, which are the uh, uh, NGV, NGVs 18s, I think they're called, or 18s they call it. Uh, obviously, like I said, those are 43 K, but that's just information. If you got money to put down for such night vision, it, I mean, I would probably focus uh, more on uh, training rather than actual uh, Gucci gear, right? There's no point on owning any of this if you're not willing to go out and train with it constantly. So uh, in my case, what I would recommend, right? If you're a new user for night vision, is just go with the mono, go with the single tube PVS 14, right? Um, I would be a little bit iffy about purchasing used unless you know what you're looking for and looking at, right? What, what issues, any blemishes, any blemishes in the tubes, anything like that, or in the lenses. Uh, or if you have a friend, uh, which, uh, can check them then you can do that. Uh, or you can go to places like us night vision, uh, which are, they're pretty much nerds. There are nerds in what they make they make their own in-house. And it's probably why the prices are actually low. They have pretty good packages when it comes to uh, their um, PBS 14 uh, models. So you could check that out. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, it means the models, those are the general models. There's several other types of night vision models for uh, ocular use. Uh, but those are the primary ones that you'll be looking at, at least here in the US market. So before we move on the equipment and everything that I have laid out on the table, uh, what is exactly the expectation and the feeling that you'll have while wearing night vision? Well, it's two simple words, right? Death perception and a uh, field of view, right? Those are the two things that you'll be dealing with. Uh, field of view is very limited. With my binos, you have only a 40% uh, 40 degree of field of view. So it's very limited. It's pretty much what's at ever, what's ever in front of you, plus a little bit more, because again, you have two ocular tubes facing forward, right? It's not like our eyes, which have a more radial, right, a view of things. That's why we have peripheral vision, right? Because of the way our eyeballs are made and how it takes in the light, right? So field of view is one of them. Depth perception, right? How close you are, how far away you can perceive objects is another one it'll be pretty limited uh i have had a few little mishaps where uh, as a beginner user i've been walking around and i hit something right uh, or you can't look at your feet right so again that depth perception right when you see individuals like in movies and films running like sprinting with night vision yeah uh, th that is no way something possible unless you're very lucky and you're very aware of what's going on, but nine times out of the day, you're probably gonna hit a wall, because again, field of view, depth perception, very limited while wearing night vision, especially in a deep, dark room, which comes into play uh, uh, differently when it comes to tactics. But that's the feeling, the expectation of how it feels to 
have night vision and wearing it, right? So let's go to the actual gear and equipment. So for the gear, what exactly do you need to initiate this? Once you've already acquired your uh, PVS 14s or night vision unit, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? There's different ways of going about it, right? There are head mount harnesses, right? Which are harnesses that go right over your head. You tighten them, you adjust them, right? And they have a shroud in the front, which you attach your rhino mount unit or your uh, mount unit for your night vision, right? There are also bump helmets, right? Which are a lot lighter in weight. And for the most part, some of them are mostly rated for uh, blunt force trauma mainly, right? Which is just hits, falls, dings, stuff like that. And they come with a front shroud, right? They're not ballistic, they cannot stop rounds. All its intended purpose is for blunt force trauma and to actually mount uh, your rhino mount onto it to be able to attach your night vision. And now there's also ballistic, which uh, this is a hard hit veterans, uh, ballistic helmet. And ballistic obviously has more weight to it, right? And can stop a certain level of a uh, certain grade of rounds depending on the nij rating that it received and that's pretty much it for the actual uh accessories for to mount on now let's talk about the actual mounts themselves that mount onto the mvg unit right here i do have a uh clone from wilcox right there are several types of mounts that you can use but you need to make sure it's the proper one for your unit. PVS 14s come with a J arm and an actual uh, mount, right? The J arm is what pretty much allows it to mount onto the random mount. Just for your awareness, cause I know there's kits that won't come with it or with a J arm, right? So just make sure it comes with that. For the most part, I like to play it safe. If the company I'm purchasing PVS or the PVS 14s from uh, comes with the kit already, or they sell it on their website i would just get it with it together uh try not to try not to cheap it out but also i understand if you're on a very tight budget which from the start you probably shouldn't be buying mvgs if you're on a tight budget but let's just say you're on the tight budget for right how much you really want to spend for night vision and uh there are clones out there that you can purchase from uh, other reputable companies, but again, it could be safe, it could be not. I'm obviously taking a risk. Uh, while uh, this is a clone from the Wilcox mount, uh, I'm not encouraging trying to go for cheap Chinese stuff, but again, you know, I already spent so much on night vision and other equipment that I have to limit certain level of options. Now I do take steps for this to make sure that obviously the mount is good. If it's not, it doesn't hold to what I've been doing, then obviously I just return it and hopefully just take the L and try to save up more for the actual thing. So far this, this mount has worked perfectly fine. It hasn't failed on me and hasn't dropped from my actual helmet and mount and stuff like that. So it's pretty good. So that's one of the other things that you should be aware of. Lastly, setting up your night vision. It's pretty straightforward. Once you mount your night vision and everything on, and you're either using your harness or your helmet, right? Whether ballistic or, or bump helmet, uh, just make sure it fits every single time. A lot of the times, even in like good, uh, high quality uh, night vision mounts and stuff, it might come unadjusted either by movement, stuff like that. So you always wanna make sure that the adjustment for your night vision fits everything. If you wear eye protection, same thing. You wanna adjust it to where it sets onto your uh, eyes at a reasonable uh, distance to where there's not too much spacing but not too close to your face, stuff like that. So always be aware of that. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video. There's not really much in means of setting up. Uh, we would go that in a different video on, you know, how to go further into detail about night vision. Other than that, let me know what you guys think about this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. This has been Manny, and until next time.